Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> um, yeah, welcome back. And uh, we've been, we started off our lesson by looking at um, the, uh, the counseling relationship. And we were looking at one of the first uh, components of that helping relationship. Uh, I'm just, just taking time to just uh, put my screen up so that all of you can view the notes yeah so this part of the no this part of it is just extra part of empathy and these aren't in your notes so don't worry I, I would just suggest that you listen because this is really understanding um, what empathy is and how is it that we can um, show this out to uh, to the counselee or, or people even we relate with. Okay, so we're going to be looking at um, the elements of uh, empathy. Uh, you know, so this is just a drawing, uh, and it, it's you know that I that I picked up from somewhere. Um, but I but I thought you know it really helps to uh, communicate this the uh, what exactly what you're looking at in in uh, empathy. So empathy, one part like we said, is seeing their world, which is to be able to see their world as the way the person sees it. This means that you also cognitively or in your thoughts understand what they're saying and can see it from their point of view. So that's what the, and the, the basic element of empathy is. It is also appreciating them as human beings without any judgment. It is also expressing being non-judgmental. Now, this the, the non-judgmental part of it is is the positive uh, part of it where it provides you know like an actionable checklist so judgment sometimes becomes like a trap when we go into judgment we discount the person's situation so that we uh, we can avoid facing or experiencing the pain that they are going through for us to express that empathy we really need to see the person as uh, you know, as as a human being, and, and and see what what is happening to them, and what is going on uh, in in their in their life. So so we need to see them as a as a human being at at the point of time that um, you know we are expressing that empathy. Someone who is valuable uh, in their um, uh, you know in God's sight, and this sometimes this need to judge can be very difficult to overcome but that's something that you know we need to really work on especially when we are working with people uh, an element of empathy is to be able to understand feelings to understand the other person's feelings so we, so for that we need to get in touch with our own emotions in order to truly connect with the other person's feelings you really need to figure out what is it that i'm feeling at this point as i'm talking to that to that other uh, to the other person uh, a common reason why people skip this element of emotions of of uh, you know understanding feelings is because we sometimes don't have our own emotions sorted out so first of all we may need to do some of our own housekeeping in order to be in a place where you can acknowledge somebody else's feelings especially maybe when you're listening to somebody's story and it really resounds to something you've heard for, or or you've experienced you get into um a a, a place where where you're experiencing your own emotions and are unable to, and, and you're probably in a place that you're unable to uh, perceive and see what's happening. And if you're in a space like that, you know, another, another, um, another uh, attribute is something called this congruence, which we will come to later, to be able to communicate your difficulty, maybe in understanding that is what uh, also is genuine, uh, is a genuine relationship. Okay. The third one is to be able to communicate the understanding the, that, that you've understood the person's feelings. And this is that final element where someone feels like they are being understood, that they are seen or that they are heard. And sometimes this can be a real struggle because we often don't know what to say. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and maybe some things that we have learned through my practice is when I 
sometimes don't know have anything to say i may just say something like you know it really appears that you're in a very difficult place right now would you like to tell me more about it but i really can't pick up what the person's going through you know just helping them see that you know that 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 i've communicated that you know it is a hard place this is a difficult place but i really want to hear some more of it um now looking at what are certain wrong patterns now the huge problem is is that um sometimes we are very good at blocking empathy because we are protecting ourselves from this feeling now imagine someone is in emotional distress by blocking their emotions from our own reality we are avoiding acknowledging and connecting to their pain like like i spoke before in short this may be great because we are avoiding pain but in the long run we destroy that relationship we destroy that environment so three common traps and pitfalls that is indicated in this uh, diagram below is uh, you know the first one it says you know pitfalls and traps uh, you you see the first again this is a drawing that i picked up um this is a uh, what you see in the first one it says even worse it's called the even worse pattern the basic idea here is to compare your counselee's problem with someone else's problem you know that is even bigger so you may say oh you're only going through this much you know yesterday i met somebody who's going through much worse i don't know how they're managing i think if they can manage this may not be too much of a problem right now on the surface we may think you're helping them but we're letting them know that their problem is really not substantial and that this and you you feel that this may help them see how important their problem really is what you're really doing is that you're saying that their problems or their feelings are invalid and uh, or or even you know maybe even unworthy and uh, this this can uh, often get to, uh, to the person to really shut down okay so it's the even worse pattern getting into a place of comparing and saying hey you know this person seems better or you know yours your seems much lesser than that okay the second trap is looking on the bright side now in this approach what you 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 ask people to focus on the positive outcome of the situation you know sometimes we say you know every cloud has a silver lining or the glass isn't half empty it's half full so what happens in these statements is that there is no place where your uh whatsoever when seeking to express empathy when we focus on just the positive rather than acknowledging the person's feelings we ignore and dismiss them as unimportant so the result is that you are invalidating the person and once they feel invalidated they may really it may be they may not really want to look at anything else okay but um uh, you know once someone but once if they are fully heard and they supported in their emotion you have used the right sense of empathy then it may be appropriate and helpful to help them look at the bright side this in itself is not a wrong technique but before you can empathize if you are actually going to help them say okay why don't you look at the bright side without really reflecting and acknowledging their feelings if you go to this it it becomes uh, again it is a wrong pattern of empathy and the last one is the problem solving rather than being with the person in the emotion you are immediately jumping to the problem solving so they are they are saying you know they are crying with all their hearts to you and before anything else and you are uncomfortable you know they are crying you are uncomfortable okay what can i do now how can i get the person to stop crying and say okay let's see what we can do about it okay now how to fix this problem that's that's the issue here you know you you're thinking of how best can i fix this problem so what you're assuming is that the person has calling you to to solve their problem by telling you about their situation you know or why else would they tell you but this if you if we avoid acknowledging or recognizing the emotion and keep it to the facts of the solution you know we're again bringing to a place where the person has no space in understanding what's going on okay so um so looking at this i mean being careful that you do not 
uh, do not go into these traps, but are, but, but are extremely careful of acknowledging and not going too fast. Don't drive your car too fast. Take it at the pace of how your counselee wants to progress. Okay. Now, what are some techniques that we use when we when we're looking at empathy? Um, uh, and, and these are these are certain encouragers. I mean, how, what do you say? How do you how do you communicate to the person that you are being empath uh, empathetic? And one of the things is maybe just saying, you know, when, when you when you listen, when you nod your head, when you smile, when you say, uh huh, when you say, okay, um, you know, when when you're actually showing all of this, you're expressing that you are listening, and this comes out in your also in your nonverbal expressions. You, you also express by saying that, you know, you want to listen and that you are uh, uh, like, not like, you know, you're checking your watch or, uh, you know, every five minutes or you're rolling your eyes or you're scratching your head or you're looking this side. That's why that side, that doesn't express to the person that you want to listen. And another empathetic technique is that you are expressing that you want to understand more about their experience. And how you do that is by asking, uh, first of all, acknowledging their feelings and then asking relevant questions to collect more information. Like, for example, you know, someone is talking to you about um, how they lost their job. OK, and they're crying and saying, you know, I lost my job. I'm, uh, you know, this is terrible. And you immediately say, OK, uh, did you try this job that uh, you know, I had given you last week. So what are you doing? You have moved them from one part to another. You've distracted that. Uh, and you really don't want to understand what the experience is that they are going through. So asking relevant questions to the very specific thing that they are telling you about. So it can start by saying, you know, can you tell me more about that? Or you spoke about that. I'm really concerned to hear about it. And, and that really shows and builds that sense of empathy that is there. OK, so another very important empathy technique, which we will be looking at in greater detail when we look at the skill is reflective listening. Now, reflective listening is a very powerful tool and you simply reflect to the other person what you think you heard, making sure you reflect their feelings. OK, it's very simple. It, uh, it it's it's communicating what you think you have heard and what you are seeing. Let's see, there's an example here. You know, Sally says, um, I really don't want to work anymore. I like being home, spending time with my children. So the reflection here is, so what I'm hearing you say is that you like and prefer being home with your children rather than working. So it's, it's a basic reflection or that, you know, you desire to be with your children and maybe, you know, staying away from your children makes you upset. There isn't, it's just expressing back to them what you have really understood. So it allows the person to feel as though you are listening of to what they said and you're clear and that you have understood them. Now that becomes, I mean, this is, these are very simple techniques, but then, you know, to be intentionally, to be able to use them is very important. Now, how does empathy, what does empathy mean to the counselee? So when you show these techniques, when you're in a place of empathy, what it uh, brings to them is they feel that they have been, I am understandable. And that makes them feel good. You know, someone understands me and someone uh, co is concerned and values what I'm saying. So the, and, and also what they are, you know, as you question, as you're trying to really, uh, you know, get into the ground of it, you're also showing the counselee that you're willing to struggle to understand them and, and because they are important to you, okay? And when they are showing you that emotions, you're not simply dismissing it and going on to the next topic, but then you are concerned that they are struggling and that you want to understand what they're going through. So that's the meaning of empathy for a counselee, that they they experience that, you know, I, that, that esteem and they experience that kind of an importance. So the functions of empathic understanding is that it helps to build a relationship between you and your counselee. It helps to explore deeper. The more that you are reflecting and you are 
uh, empathizing, the more that they will begin to see see something in them. I have had countless number of times where counselees say, you know, as I'm talking, this thing has come to me. As I'm talking about this, or as you ask this question, I have made this relation that this is probably what it is. And it actually stimulates so much more of an exploration that they begin to uh, see a lot of things that they have not seen before, but because of the empathy that you have shown, they're able to express out. Okay. It also checks understanding, empathic understanding. What you're doing is, hey, this is the way I think you're feeling. Is that right? And they will tell you, no, sorry, I'm not feeling that. I'm feeling this. It actually helps you to realign yourself in what they are going through. It provides support. It improves communication. The focus specifically is on the counselee and it helps in the growth of the counselee. You know, it's not, it's not a, a radical growth, but it may be slow and uh, steady, but the growth continues to be there. Sometimes there are certain barriers in, uh, in, in empathy. And I just want to bring about some of this is just for us to understand that how, how, what we need to be careful about. Sometimes cultural differences can be a barrier to empathy. In, in the kind of culture that I'm living in and the culture that my counselee is in, maybe there are times that there could be certain misunderstanding in the way that our cultures are, right? And sometimes that, that can come as, as an issue. So really exploring the culture is, is a good thing. So whenever I meet with new people, I understand a little bit about where they come from, what their belief systems are, what's if, if they're from India, what states are they coming from, what has been their general familial pattern, what kind of culture have they grown up in, what's been their economic status, what's been their spiritual growth. It gives you a good understanding about their culture. Gender. Sometimes Gender in itself can be a barrier, right? You know, like, a, like for example, from a woman to a man and the way that they experience empathy is, is quite different. So that can be a, a barrier. Not viewing the other individual as an equal can, can, be, can be established as an, as an empathy. Either you view someone higher than you or so you, you view someone lower than you. Your ideas and your beliefs become, become a barrier into, into, into empathy. And lastly, of course, if you ha are uncomfortable with emotions, if you are uncomfortable with dealing with your own emotions, most probably you would be uncomfortable dealing with somebody else's emotions. I think we spoke about this, that empathic understanding is not sympathy. So the fact is that, you know, you don't sympathize. Uh, to, to remember that empathic understanding or empathy is also an experience. It's uh, an experience for you as a counselor. You are seeing the world as if, but you realize that you're not the one. You know, like it says, see the world as if you are the other, but you also realize that you're not the one going through the entire thing. This accurate understanding means that you as a counselor is completely at home in the world of your counseling. It is a moment-to-moment -moment sensitivity uh, about their present. It's sensing their inner world of private personal meanings. You know, what have they brought meaning to it? And um, as if it was your own, but yet, you know, you're separate from it. But uh, so, so that accurate sensitivity to, to what um, your counseling brings is of primary value in, in that relationship. So you can also, as a counselor, experience the quality and depth of their anger or their fear without actually feeling angry or depressed yourself. You know, the pain that they're talking about, you can actually feel that experience and quality without actually assuming it as your own. And that is something that I, I believe comes by practice and by experience as you, as you continue to speak and um, work with people, okay? So what are certain steps to show empathy? Now, now this, this looks very compartmentalized as the diagram, but you know, it, just for us to understand is a, the first very step is to create a safe environment for the person. Now this is both literal as well or as also figuratively that you know, the, the place should be 
uh, free and uncluttered and private. And it should be a, a calming presence for the person who's coming to talk to you. Like, you know, you're, if, if someone's coming to talk to you in your living room and you have kids walking all around, there's a phone ringing, there are people coming in, there's a maid walking in, it's not a safe environment. So both literally and figuratively where, and you also have uncluttered your mind from different things. So if you're not in a place to listen, be congruent or be genuine to share that with the other person. Okay. Step two is using encouraging behaviors. Like I said, you know, verbal encouragers or uh, nonverbal encouragers for, to help them share more information about their circumstance. So it can be things like, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I mean, all of this help in encouraging them to speak more. And third is truly listen to the words and observe their nonverbal cues with complete attention. So every ounce of attention is focused on your uh, counselee and trying to see where they are coming from is crucially very, very important. So if you look at a formula, now this is something just to help you understand. Now, how, what, what formula can I use? You know, I mean, this looks like a maths or a physics class, but often this is very, very helpful. You know, that when, once you, when you create a safe environment and uh, a nurturing place, the person opens up. So what can you say? A basic formula for displaying empathy is this. You feel something that is, you know, you name the emotion that is expressed, that may be expressed by the counselee. You, 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 you feel sad, upset, uh, isolated, dejected, angry, whatever they are talking about because. And then you name the thoughts or the experience or the behaviour that the person is is talking about okay and uh sorry yeah and uh so so to to be able to do this really uh, it, it's good to have this formula in your mind so that you're not groping in the dark as to what do I say, what do I say, what do I say. The only thing you're going to focus on is, okay, let me listen and let me pick out a specific emotion that they are talking about. So you, you express that in one way. Now, just in case you're not able to figure out what they are thinking... You can even say, you know, let me see if I have this right, or uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm making a guess here, or let me know if this is accurate. But this is what I think you're feeling because of such and such thing, and and that's perfectly uh, fine to do because they will definitely clarify with you if if that is that is not in uh, that that is error. Okay, so let's quickly do uh, um, an, uh, uh, you know a practice. Um, Let's look at the third one. I can't live another day with my husband. Okay. How will you show empathy? Can you either you, you know, quickly write it down on the chat or, uh, you know, you could quickly unmute and, and uh, give that to me. I can't live another day with my husband. Use the formula that we spoke about. So, you know, say you feel dash because dash. I know there's very little information given, but this is just for our help and practice. I'm waiting for answers or uh, quick responses. <clears throat> Students? Hello? Did I? I hope I didn't sing a lullaby. Okay, great. Thank you, Beth. Okay, so you said um, you feel hopeless because your husband passed away? Okay, I don't think he's passed away, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, you feel hopeless because uh, you're, okay, maybe I, I think you've got the context a little little wrong, but but that's good. That's, that's, a, that's a good uh, thing. Okay, you feel hopeless because, um, um, you know, you're finding it difficult to um difficult to uh, uh, sort out your conflicts with your husband that's one way okay anybody else you feel frustrated because your husband doesn't connect and uh, this is sorry Doesn't correct and connect and understand you. Okay, great, wonderful. Avni, you said you feel depressed because your husband doesn't understand you. Anita, you feel alone because he doesn't spend time with you. 
very good excellent that's that's a good job all right so that's good so uh, that, you know what what i what i really want to encourage you to, very sorry dear how can i help you rupa use the use the formula use the formula um he, she's saying something so you're responding first empathy is you're responding maybe it's just that one line but you're responding to that chaya you feel lonely because you feel there isn't a connect excellent very good okay um i think there are many more you feel tired of your marriage because your husband uh, fails to commit excellent it is uh, someone's written it is an empty feeling you feel not having your wife around uh sorry i'm not able to see that fully for some reason you feel lacking something because he doesn't understand you okay i think you guys have got the flow right so what i want to really um uh um suggest to you all is whenever you're talking to somebody okay try and put this formula in your mind yes prabhaka you feel uncomfortable because your husband won't give you his attention wonderful great a good job and this really helps when you do this it actually opens up another door for your counselee to share even more yeah yeah that's absolutely right you know yesterday this is blah 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 and, and they will keep going on and then you can continue the empathy by by using this you know so keep this formula in your mind and and as you keep practicing it you will definitely find a lot more in the way that that you are you're bringing this out great i can still see more you feel unloved because he's not valuing you you feel you don't want to live with your husband uh, any more okay maybe adding a feeling there would would probably happen maybe uh, would be good like maybe like you know you feel frustrated to uh, to live another day with him because of what you're going through you know so so that's good so so you guys are get getting the flow on that okay uh, so keep doing that and and work on that so when you are um you know i think something very important uh, this is a very self reflecting asking yourself is whenever you're hearing someone ask this you know am i compassionate enough to care about and understand what someone else is saying so even as you are maybe you know dealing with certain issues at your own home with people significant people ask yourself this am i compassionate enough to care about what the other person is saying am i able to put myself in somebody else's shoes so completely that i don't criticize or judge them and can i let myself enter into the other's feelings and personal meanings to see the way that they do and if these if these if this is a yes okay and and a true genuine yes i'm sure that you know you, you you will be able to help through this very very important skill of uh, empathy okay moving to the next one is what we call as the as unconditional positive regard unconditional positive regard now um you know people nurture growth by being accepting by uh, by offering what we call as the unconditional positive regard now this i believe is an attitude of grace an attitude that values us even knowing our feelings the same way that god regards us you know um he values us despite what we have failed in and this is a profound truth and um it is also you know for a person like uh, when i'm talking about this i'm saying just to know that god treats me with that unconditional grace is such a relief to know that i can drop all my pretenses confess my worst feelings and discover that even though that i've done certain things i am the way that i am i am still accepted you know it's it's that freedom to be spontaneous without really fearing the loss of the esteem god has given me right and in counseling this is essential to that healthy relationship so people you know when you regard that pos uh, positively they are more inclined to accept responsibility for themselves and their behavior when they are actually in a non condemning and non combative environment so the when you regard them they are more willing to actually look at themselves and say you know i 
I, I feel rotten for the way that for what I've done. They will actually tell you that because you have bought you have facilitated a non-judgmental atmosphere and that promotes that openness and honesty and even confession because unconditional positive regard is uh, non-judgmental you as a counselor will be more inclined to listen to the client to build that relationship so it helps the counselor this unconditional positive regard helps you to empathize it it helps in the first attitude and this this way, the uh, the counselee also learns to accept the feelings and the flaws of others. So as you're doing it for them, they're also able to uh, do it for themselves also. You know, they're, sorry, they're also able to hold on uh, to regard regarding the other person as well. Now, we see that uh, unconditional positive regard is a very scriptural construct okay where we you know it it, it we, we see that in john 13 34 35 is is that you know to love one another as god has loved us so that we we also so you also are to love and so we are also called to love one another so when we break down this these um, uh, this this very uh, these three words unconditional means absolutely not holding any condition whatsoever holding no condition of acceptance not because you're this and this is why i accept you i accept you because you are one of god's creations made in his image positive means that acceptance or that prizing that someone is prized someone is esteemed someone is valued and of course the regard is that care or respect that you give them as a unique person. So what you're doing is you're regarding every aspect of the counselee's experience as part of being who they are. It means caring for them, not in a possessive way, in such a way as, uh, you know, to satisfy your needs or to, to feel good or to be, be the, a good person, but it's caring for the person as a separate per person, the person who has their, uh, has their feelings and has their own experiences. So that's, that's um, what we are called to do. Now, this, uh, an unconditional positive regard is, because, is, is an attitude, as, as we have seen here. You know, it's, it's an attitude. It's a feeling. It's a mindset. It may not be as much as a skill. It's not something that you can act towards others. It's something that comes from, from within. And um, uh, it, what it says is that, the, that, that you as a person, you value them. It's showing that support and acceptance of them no matter what they do. It, and over here again, as we had so spoken of the last time, it does not mean that you're approving of their behavior. It only means that you are valuing them as a, as a person. So what is this? what does this unconditional positive regard have to hold or or what how do you how do you view others you're viewing the other person as a person of destiny you're viewing them as they are equipped that they're talented that they are creative that they're designed for a purpose it's the way that you regard them the way you're not regarding them in the way that they have regarded themselves or the way that others have regarded them you're regarding them as someone who is who is uh, unique and 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 has a as a specific purpose okay why is this important this is important because um, very often you know in other relationships in order to live up to the expectations of others we all have defenses right we wear a mask but in the presence of a counselor, they need to be helped to be themselves and express what they want without being judged because of this unconditional positive regard, it, it helps a counselee feels valued for who he is. Usually in other, uh, other uh, relationships, they may put up those defenses and as a result, they suppress those feelings and they behave as if they are happy. So we nurture this growth by being acceptant and offering this, um, this very attitude called as the unconditional positive regard now as a person finds so how how is this communicated to the um to um uh, uh, to a counselee how how does unconditional positive regard get communicated to a counselee so as as the person you know finds you 
who's listening and accepted of their feelings, they become more op open and they are honest to what they want to share. You know, if when you regard them, uh, there may be many times, you know, in your first session or the first time that you meet with them, they will say, um, you know, maybe I will talk about this at a later point of time. But as you see the session progressing and you've seen, um, you will see the difference because they will start opening up. They will say, you know, I think I will bring up what I said that I wanted to bring up the next time. That's because they have felt that you have regarded them. So it encourages them to share whatever is going on. And they're also likely to accept themselves um, and the responsibility that they have in working through their situation. So that's that's what it creates for them, you know, that ability to just open up and share what uh, what is going on with them. Now, like I said, unconditional positive regard is a, is not a skill. It's not a practice. It's not something you can do, but it is a frame of mind. It is a place where you are you're learning not to be judgmental and be accepted. Now, this is something that sometimes can get very difficult because it's not a because it's not a skill and it's a frame of mind. It's not easy sometimes to develop this, especially when when as as by nature we may be quite judgmental or you know we're very critical about things, but showing warmth. And developing that relationship is often there and that really gains that respect and acceptance. So to create that climate is, is very important. And you do that by the way that you respond, by the way that you speak, by the way that you show that, that, you, that they are important to you. Okay. Now, um, uh, this unconditional positive regard is very crucial in counseling. Why? Because you could be their last chance. You could be their only person who has welcomed them, accepted them and understood them. Okay. And your acceptance is all that they need to bring about that change. Okay. Now this person, Carl Rogers, he's the one who established these three uh, uh, attitudes of, of, a, of a counselor of a, in a counselling relationship. And I've just put down some a quote that he's written. It says, when you criticise me, I intuitively dig in to defend myself. However, when you accept me like I am, I suddenly am willing to change. And that's with that premise that we believe that unconditional positive regard really helps to create that place of change for, for, an, for an individual. OK, um, so certain again, uh, you know, just quickly some uh, some uh, uh, examples here. Um, but but over here, I, I do see, you know, sometimes when how is it that we don't show? Maybe I think we will flip it on the other 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 way. When a person, let's say the we'll take the. Uh, when we'll take the first one, I'm a hopeless mom. I just lost my temper with my toddler. How is it that you don't show unconditioned positive regard? Maybe let's look at what we shouldn't be doing rather than what we should be doing. You know, what shouldn't we be saying uh, uh, to them? What shouldn't you be saying to them? You could quickly put it out on the chat. What shouldn't you be saying? To a mother who says, I'm a hopeless mom. I just lost my temper with my toddler. You're a bad mother. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you shouldn't be saying that. All right. What else? Yeah, you should try to control yourself. Yes, you shouldn't be saying that. Absolutely. What else? You're very harsh. Okay. You can't lose your temper with a toddler who is helpless. Absolutely. Great. I think you, you guys have got the flow again. Wonderful. Uh, great. I'm so glad that you're stupid. <laughs> okay. All right. So there are very many things that, you know, all of this may definitely does not express that unconditional positive regard. The third one that we're going to look at is what is called as genuineness, or it's another term for genuineness is what we call congruence, okay? Genuineness or congruence. Now, this important quality is, uh, is another name for authenticity, of being true to oneself, okay? So again, just like unconditional positive regard, you know, this is, this is not a very easy concept to, uh, to, to really explain, but, you know, we're going to try our best to do that. 
Okay. Now, genuineness um, is uh, so. I, okay. So the easiest way to think of genuine genuineness is to regard it as open communication. Okay. To make it easier for the counselee to understand you, the counsellor, uh, you you need to be direct and open in the way that you communicate. First of all, is not trying to put yourself on some pedestal and let the counsellee think that you are a teacher and they are the pupil or you are divine and they are mortal, uh, you know, that you have all the answers and solutions to their problems. It's first and foremost helping them see that it's not that, okay? And often you would see people saying, okay, I just came to you to find out, you know, tell me, what should I do? And that immediately puts you at a place of, you know, um, you know, like like a back foot. So to be able to, it basically, what you basically need to be yourself as you really feel at that time. So there are times that I say, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, unsure or quizzical about what you can do about the situation, but then I want to work this with you to be able to help you find um, what an answer is, okay? Because I don't have that solution, right? And and uh, of course, the, like, like we said, you know, our connect with the Holy Spirit is to be able to also help them to come to a place where they are, as believers, open to what the Holy Spirit, Spirit needs to say. So when you are open yourself, you're setting an example and you're encouraging them to not to stop denying or to not to not pretend or not to conceal um, your uh, 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 the thoughts and the feelings. So you are being authentic and you're not putting on that I know best facade. OK, you are there and you are being real and you are role free. Role free is, you know, you're not called to to bring about the answers and you it is not you do not have to hide your true self when when you're looking at this genuineness so so genuineness is a state of being or it's a place where you are where your outward uh, responses match what your inner feelings may be towards your client or your counselee. So the counsellor, to be yourself, serve as a model for counselling, you win that respect and confidence of counselling, you need to have this genuineness. And research has definitely shown that the higher the degree of congruence, the more probability there is going to be change in the person who's sitting with you. Okay, The counsellor, you're not thinking and feeling one way and saying something different. All right. So being genuine is really being absolutely uh, authentic about what you are going on. Now, uh, even as we're looking at uh, genuineness, there are three levels of um, uh, of, of experiencing of, of three levels of a person. There is a uh, that there, there is a level of experience we have. There is a level of awareness and there is a level of communication. So the level of experience is what you may be going through. The level of awareness of the experience is, um, you know, like, like for example, maybe I'll, I'll give you an example. So while, while you're discussing something, um, let's say you, you raise your voice and then you say that you're not angry. So it shows that you're really unaware of, of the feelings of anger that is within you. Okay. And, and because of that, you're communi communicating that you're not feeling angry. But in congruence, what is happening is you're you are communicating what you're experiencing, all right? So when you are feeling angry and you've communicated it, you've also matched that it. So genuineness is, it has to match everything. Like for example, you know, if you can look at my face, I'm saying, oh, I'm so very happy that you've got, got a, such a great job. Is there even joy and excitement in my face? Absolutely not. I have such a dull effect as I said that, it shows, it really appears that there hasn't been any genuineness in the way that I commented it, okay? Or to say something like, oh, I feel so sad that you have just experienced uh, a loss in your family. You know, that doesn't make any sense. There's, there's a lot of happy effect, happy face that's there. But then, you know, what I'm expressing is, is something totally different. So there has to be an accurate matching of the way I'm experiencing it, the way that I'm aware of it, and the way that I communicate that to my, uh, to my counselee. Okay, I think I will go. Yeah. So genuineness, 
is basically what we are saying is being real, true, and authentic. It's again, not a role or not a skill. It's a lifestyle. It is something that we, we show matching in our body language and in our words. Uh, it's not being defensive. It's not being held up in the role of a pastor or a counselor or a, or a, uh, you know, any of that or, or anything, but just, just being in the role of, of someone who genuinely wants to understand. Okay. Uh, genuineness is also counseling from life and as well as scripture, being aware of your feelings and also learning how to be spontaneous is what genuineness is. Okay. So as an example, let's quickly look at an example. Um, uh, uh, so we look at the first one. As I'm counseling, my mind suddenly strays off. What would you, what would you say? You know, I, the person's talking is giving you a big story and uh, you've gone away. You've lost track. You've lost trail. What would you say? Yeah. What would your response be? I'll come back. I'll just go drink some water and come. <laughs> what would you say? You're not interested. Thank you. Uh, no, what would you say? This is as you are uh, counseling, you've lost your thoughts. Okay, sorry, can you repeat or... I got lost in my thoughts. Okay, wonderful. I'm sorry, I lost my attention. Could you please repeat? Very good. Okay, great. So you could say something like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I apologize. Um, you know, I, I didn't pick up some things that you're, you're saying. Um, would, you, would you please repeat that? Yeah, good. Okay, so being genuine and, or even, so I, I think for, uh, let's say, uh, you're maybe the person's talking and talking and talking and talking and you're you know you're getting a headache and you need to end your session what would you say what what would you what would you tell them right so being genuine about what you are experiencing uh, really helps uh, and you don't have to put up a facade or put up put up a show on that okay so today we looked at these components of the helping relationship one being empathy one being unconditional positive regard and the last being genuineness okay yeah um yeah so is is there any any question that that you all would have with regard to this we will probably take up you know, five minutes. I request you all to stay on for five minutes, and we can uh, we can just answer. Yes, uh, Shri Kumar, you can put up your question. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Pastor, thank you, Pastor. I want to know uh, one thing. Uh, as you said, um, you know, uh, genuineness and uh, accept the feeling. Um, in case, um, in case the husband and wife both are coming and uh, they are having. Um, uh, like uh, they are in a place where they want to separate and they have their own uh, way of understanding the life. So in that case, how we can, um, how can a person be genuine for both of them? Because both of them <laughs> are sharing their problem and uh, uh, how can we able to accept their feelings? Like, you know, as you said, uh, you know, uh, we are actually, um, you know, Empath uh, empathetic towards to the husband also and empathetic towards to the feeling of the husband, feeling of the wife. But um, um, but they are actually, both of them are actually opposite to each other. They are not, uh, you know, um, they don't want to understand each other. So in that case, um, how can I be genuine to both of them where uh, they both are in a different, um, you know, uh, both are in different direction? And, um, and how can I be able to counsel or how can I can become genuine to them? Because for them, if I if I take the side of the wife, the husband will feel that, um, you know, I'm understanding more the wife. And if I am understanding the husband, the husband will feel that. So uh, as a as a counselor, um, how can able to I can able to stand and uh, to make the uh, you know to solve this problem and be like as you as we discuss how can I be genuine to them or how can I able to follow these all the things what you talked today thank you pastor okay 
Yeah, so that's that's a good that's a good question. It's like you know you'll have to get out from one shoes, get into the other shoes. Get out from one shoes, get into the other shoes, and both of these shoes are totally contrary to one another, right? I can I can totally understand your yes. your yes. dilemma in this. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So. So, um, so here, let, I think there are two things uh, as part of your question that I want to look at. One is when we are looking at helping a couple, we are not looking at number one, not siding either of them. We are not in a place of a judge sitting and saying, "Okay, maybe you're right or they're right." That's not where we are. Okay. where we are it is being a neutral party and helping them to come to a place of communicating what has their struggles been so you as a facilitator are not going to say um you know wife this is a wrong part this is what you're doing wrong think of what the husband is doing or vice versa what you are tending to do is you're going to pick up the communication that you're hearing from the wife she's talking about her struggles and saying hey young man you know this is what she's expressing what do you feel about it and you're saying you know husband this is what you are going through you feel this and this in it wife what is it that you want to take out of what he's saying so you're being a neutral person in that combination in helping them to come to a place of understanding where each person is at you're not at a place where you are siding for one another or agreeing that one person is right or one person is wrong okay so that's the that's the content part of it now how do you how do you become genuine so one the first and foremost thing is in you as a counselor's mind um when we hear a story we are often quick to judge and understand okay they went through this because um maybe let's say in this case there was a extramarital affair okay and so you're saying okay this is like this because the husband is at fault he went to this thing and uh, went uh, for an affair and that's why he so we've already made that kind of a judgment now that's what that's what we're going back to think of unconditional positive regard no matter what is being presented to you you are still acceptant of the person of who he is of the husband you're not approving of the behavior you are acceptant of the person okay so it is like we said it's not a skill it's an attitude change so the more that you have helped yourself accept the individual for who he is no matter what he's done this need to feel that Uh, or or this this um, the the feeling that comes in into you to say okay you are wrong you know and that's what genuinely you may be feeling you know that something is going on over here that you know he is not right and i should be in a place of correction and that's why you go on to this to the second uh, at, attribute of unconditional positive regard so that's why we need to work on first to be able to regard people no matter what they have come come to you with because until and unless we are able to accept them we may not be we may not feel very genuine right so there may be some biases or prejudices or understanding that we have about a certain situation if we have not worked that out in our own selves we may we may not be efficient counselors because we are in a place of actually judging them and we may be genuinely trying to help but that doesn't help that individual so i would say more than genuineness it it will go up to that point of unconditional positive regard of of actually <clears throat> analyzing for yourself how you feel towards that person who's had that wrong behavior and what is it that you can do to work on the way that you're seeing them okay because when you see them as equal participants in your counseling you will not be in a position to feel that you know i must side with one another or uh, you know i must i must help the uh, uh, i must uh, um you know defend the other person that's not our role in counseling our role in counseling is to help both the individuals come together to a place of understanding what the situation is and what in their dealings is causing the problem that's where i am called for not for them to work out and 
figure out who is right and who is wrong uh, as we go through these you know some of these uh, topics i think it will become a lot more clearer to you this is specifically of how we how we need to have a lifestyle of these attitudes in the way that we see people because unless and until this is there you know it will be it will come into a barrier in the way that we counsel we will begin to put side we will begin to attach sides or we will become we will become judgmental or we will become in a place of saying you know husband you're not right in this uh, you know go repent and come back and we remember we're not in the prophet's role we are in the role of a counselor where we are drawing out from the person so that they can come to a place of understanding themselves and thus make the change okay thank um, you boss right. thank you shay shay can i have your question too uh, i'm so sorry pastor it's not really a question just an observation that everything we seem to be learning I think even beyond just counseling I think it applies to everyday life how we listen and handle issues with people family or friends so I just wanted to make that comment thank you Absolutely I I I think this is something that is very needed for us especially as ministers and Christian believers to to really uphold these attributes thank you Shay I I I do agree with you I think Prabhaka has asked an, uh, asked a question sometimes when we know the truth uh, that the person is lying or not genuine how to stop them from fooling or playing a trick on us without bringing them down or making them open okay now this is a skill that we will be learning it's called the skill of confrontation okay that uh, and that's something that you use in counseling when you begin to see that somebody that your counselee is not being genuine or they are probably manipulating or they are lying or um, you know they are they are they're doing then they're not being honest and truthful that's a skill called as confrontation and we will learn about that that has probably it's it's more to do with the counselee's uh, standing today's lesson was all about how as a counselor we need to be be genuine we need to empathize and as well as be have unconditional positive regard to those uh, who come to us okay all right okay that was a full class i i totally enjoyed actually just uh, just that i i hope this takes back a lot of uh, you know attitudinal lifestyle changes for us as we deal with other people uh, may i request somebody to please close with a word of prayer and uh, we can we can close in anybody anyone can quickly just close in prayer Uh, Tarun, may I request you to pray if you're there, Tarun? Uh, yeah, I'll pray. There's some background noise. I'm sorry. No problem. Uh, no problem. Yeah, Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what we have learned. We pray that um, as we uh, spend the uh, days to come, we get to become more empathetic and uh, we get to uh, see the people the way that you see them and. work with them as we interact lord we thank you for this class and all the learning we give you glory and we ask this in jesus name amen amen thank you tarun you you have a amen. young en young entrant into the class also your little baby wonderful yeah, thank yeah, you so much keen on listening here yeah. <laughs> okay thank you god bless thank we you. will meet yeah. again next week thank you so much bye bye